Hey guys, I'm back out here in my shop and I'm going to continue working on the uh, little CNC router that I've been working on here. Uh, I managed to make it out here a couple of nights this past week and, and got a few more parts cut. This is going to be the, uh, the upper rail that holds the, the aluminum angle on this side and then this is going to be the, uh, let's see, it goes this way I guess, the bottom rail. So I've got to attach my aluminum angle to these two. I've got most of the z-axis done. Uh, I kind of put it together here to make sure everything's fit right and I'm going to have to take it back apart but I did kind of number uh, you know so I can put it back the same way to make sure I get the, the same fit that I had before. But right now the next step I've got to cut my uh, aluminum angle. I'm going to use my miter saw for that. I believe that that blade will cut uh, aluminum angle. But I, I've also got to drill all the holes to attach this aluminum angle here. And I want to try to get it as accurate as I can. So I used my CNC router just now to create this little template. And some of the holes that I've got on this aluminum angle are two and a quarter on center, center to center. And then some of them are three inches center to center. And some of them are four inches center to center. So what I did is I made this little template uh, where I'm going to set this up on my drill press. And I'll, I'll show you this again later. I'm going to get ready to set it up, but I'm going to put my drill bit here, and then I've got these holes here, the one on either side are two and a quarter center to center, then I've got one that's three inches center to center from this one, and then the final one is four inches, so what I'll do is I'll set that up, drill my first hole, and then I'll put this little dowel in here, and then I can use it to, uh, you know, locate my, uh, my next hole, and that way I can try to get them exact so that it will fit really nice on those, because those, those were all cut with the CNC, so they're uh, very accurate so anyway so the next step is to get my aluminum angle cut okay guys this is how I'm uh, drilling these holes in this angle I'm actually Put the uh, center hole in and on these I want them to go every four inches which is that last hole so I'm just using a quarter inch drill bit to uh, hold that in and do the do the next hole Okay, for this last hole, I want this one to be three inches instead of four. So you can see I've got, this is the hole I was using, there's my three inch hole. So now I'll just put this one right here. And that will make the next one three inches on center. Okay, I got all my my angles drilled and I've already got this one attached this is going to be the lower uh, y-axis rail and it will go right through there and the slots are so you can adjust the tension on that uh, as well uh, one thing I will note when you're making these uh, z-axis notice that there's a right and a left so when you're drilling the holes for these make sure you don't uh, drill both of them the same you have to make one uh, you know, the opposite of the other one because you got a right and a left hand. So, got those done. And what I did is after I'm, after I got my, uh, let me move the camera a little bit where you can see. Yeah, what I, what I did is after I got my uh, angles drilled, I fastened them into this uh, little workmate here and clamped the angles and then I could use that as a drill guide to drill straight in and make sure I get these things flush on the, uh, make sure I get the angle flush on the edge of this board here so that it will uh, fit on there just like it's supposed to. Okay, so. I just finished putting up the, uh, the rails here. I've got this top rail all bolted up uh, and I took the, the back panel back off so that I could, because uh, these go all the way through and then you fasten them with nuts. I'll take the camera off and show you here in just a sec and how that goes on. But I've got my angle on here and I've sided it down here. I've got a nice 
nice straight angle. Uh, this lower rail, you see I've got slots in it, and it will be adjusted once you put the uh, other plate on, and that's what I'm getting ready to cut uh, next. I've got the uh, Z-axis assembly, got the rails on that, got those nice and straight. Uh, so I think this thing may work, uh, may work pretty good. Uh, one other thing I might do is, uh, I didn't think about it as I was building it the first time, but when I put the, uh, the gantry together, I noticed when you, once you're putting that back panel on and you're using these dowel nuts, if you drop one down in there, it's just going to rattle around. There's no place for it to really fall out. So I think what I'm going to do is before I put the back panel on, I'm going to just take a uh, you know spade bit or something and just cut a hole up under here in the center. So when I'm putting that back panel on, should I drop anything in there, uh, it can I can shake it around and it'll fall out that hole and I can get it back out. So that's uh, one thing I didn't think of when I was drawing this up. But anyway, I'm going to fire up the CNC and run the uh, Z axis, Y axis plate, and we'll put the V group bearings on that. And uh, this thing is starting to uh, starting to take some shape here. So let me get that done, and uh, I'll turn the camera back on. Oh, let me before I do that, let me pull the camera off here. All right. Well, rather than pull the camera off and, and being all shaky and everything, let me just turn this thing around so that you can see. Uh, this is what I was talking about when you have the back panel off you're bolting these uh, rails through here and then when you put this back panel on you put a dowel nut in here if, it, if you drop it in here uh, there went one falling out from somewhere I guess from when I was taking it back apart uh, you know it's just going to rattle around in here and that would really be annoying hearing that thing rattle around so um, I'm going to uh, Put a, put a hole big enough that one of these uh, dowel nuts can fall through uh, before I put that back panel on, so that's what I want to show you. Okay guys, I got the Z-axis plate here all mounted up. I thought I'd show this to you. Uh, I've got some really smooth linear motion on the z-axis here and also on the y-axis. Uh, but there are a couple of things that I did want to point out. I, I actually made a couple of mistakes and I thought I would uh, show you what those uh, are so that uh, you won't make the same mistakes if you try to build one of these on your own. But one of the things I did, and it was all when I was modeling it up in my 3D software, is I had this dimension uh, too big. I actually had this uh, this distance here where it was farther down, and so when I got ready to put this plate on here, it, even when I pushed it all the way up, I still had eight inches here, and I needed about seven and a half or so between those two uh, feed groove wheels. So I thought about it for a little bit and I thought okay well the easiest fix is just to recut this plate and made it longer. Well the problem with that was the reason I designed it this height to start with is so when I bring it all the way over here it doesn't catch on this part that's, uh, that's kind of sticking out here right on the side panel uh, and the longer one did so I thought okay so I've got to go back and basically what I did is I misplaced these holes here so what I did is I uh, raised this all the way up and then re-drilled the holes uh, higher up, which is, about, I guess, about an inch higher. Uh, and I'll correct my drawing so that if any of you use my plans or something, you won't have to worry about that. But uh, that, that solved that because now you can put this uh, Y-axis or Z-axis plate on here. You can kind of raise this up, leave these loose, uh, slide it on, and then push it down and tighten it up and get a really nice, get, get some good good linear motion there. Um, another thing I did that was a uh, mistake, but it wasn't really building something, it was when I ordered these, I ordered these big screws from McMaster Car. Uh, these are 3 8 16 and I got some 2 inch and then some 3 inch ones here. But I guess when I clicked on them, I clicked on the wrong thing and I got the ones that have the slotted head instead of the Phillips head. 
Uh, well, I can tell you right now, do not, I repeat, do not use these ones with a slotted head because they're a pain in the butt to, uh, to drive in with a cordless drill. It's a whole lot easier if you have a Phillips head. But I thought, well, since I've got these, I'm going to go ahead and use them. So but I thought I would point that out. So anyway, got a lot of this done. The next step is I'm going to order um, the Acme screws. You can see I've already got a mount here. There'll be an Acme nut here. I've still got to design um, a plate on the bottom here that will hold the bottom of the, the screw. And then I'll ha also have a motor mount over here so that that will raise and lower the Z-axis. And then I've also got one on the back here. I'm going to move the camera around here in a minute. You can see because I'll have a lead screw. I'll have to build some mounts that will attach to this thing. I have a motor with a lead screw and have an Acme nut right here in the center. And this will push this this way. And also, I've got, uh, well, I don't see what I did with it now, but I've got one more of these. I actually got to make two more because I'm going to put uh, one on each side here. And we're going to have dual lead screws. Oh, here it is. Yeah, I've got one right here. And that will go here. And then again, I got to make another one and put another one on the other side. And that will be the dual lead screws that. Uh, make this thing go back and forth and I like to use dual lead screws simply because if you try to use one in the center or something like that you have it, this thing will have a tendency to rack so if you use two of them or two stepper motors and you slave them together you get a nice smooth motion uh, that's the way my other CNC is and it works just great so that's uh, that's the way I'm planning on going so let me move this camera around and I'll show you some close-ups of this Okay, here's a close-up view of the uh, the side here, and you'll notice that that I've got a couple of extra washers uh, on these V-groove bearings here, so that it will set this plate off far enough that it just misses uh, the other uh, screws, the head heads of the screws on this other side. You got about maybe a sixteenth there. Um, another thing you can see here is on these when I'm doing this V um, Z-axis. I've got a dowel nut and a screw that once you push this in, you can tighten this up and it will push this over against to get take all the slop out of that so you get a really nice motion there. Okay, that's just about going to wrap it up for uh, this week. Um, I hope you all are enjoying uh, watching this build and I hope that some of you are ready to make the leap uh, and, and build your own CNC. Uh, they're a lot of fun. I enjoy running mine. and. Uh, I'm sure you will too once you get one built. Uh, another thing I thought I would mention real quick is uh, another thing I did with this this build that I really found out I really didn't need to is I counterboard uh, some of these holes here in this where this oval slot is to get the screw head out of the way. And I really don't think I needed to do that because it looks like once you space this off to clear the the head of the screws on the back of the Z plate that you really got enough anyway they're not going to interfere but didn't hurt anything that I did it but it's probably just something if I was going to do it again uh, it's not really necessary to do that so uh, that'd be one less uh, one less thing to do uh, anyway this that's going to wrap it up for this one uh, again I want to thank all my new subscribers had a bunch of new subscribers uh, and I appreciate all of those Another thing too, let me remind you again, if you're anywhere near the Atlanta area, uh, this next weekend, March uh, 7, 8th, and 9th, I believe it is, there's going to be a uh, wood show at uh, Atlanta Trade Center in Norcross. Uh, I'm probably going to be there, it looks like right now I'm going to be there Friday, so if you happen to go to that wood show and see me wandering around there, uh, please come up and say hello. Uh, it would be nice to meet some of my uh, subscribers and stuff like that in person. So. Anyway, uh, I guess that's going to wrap up this one, and uh, until next time, we'll talk to you later.